This is my real-life review of the DCO film Kata Zooms. My experience using this pair of affordable cinema zooms on an entire documentary production from start to finish. This is a Cinedy Review, supported by B&H and CVP. The DCO film Kata Zooms have been on the market for a couple of months now. And instead of doing a quick, rather superficial first look review, I decided to use them on a full documentary production. Because of the look of the images the Kata Zooms produce, more on that later, they became the perfect match for this film. The documentary itself is about a very difficult historical subject. The Nazis' euthanasia program during World War II. And because much of the film consists of talking head interviews with historians and contemporary witnesses, I was going for a warm, cinematic, yet slightly vintage look. A big thank you goes out to the DCO film team for loaning us these lenses for many months, as shooting days kept being pushed and rescheduled due to Covid restrictions. And the second big thank you goes out to the producer and director of the documentary, Alex Milliker and his production company Ostfilm, who made sure we are able and allowed to use images of this unfinished documentary for this review. Now the shoot is over and I have used them in a variety of shooting scenarios. First off, before going into detail, if you're just after my opinion, I love the look that these lenses produce. They take the digital edge of modern cinema cameras and truly make the image look more cinematic. Now I have to add that this is not a very technical review as I talk about my real-life experience with those lenses. But if you are after a more technical test of the DCO film Kata zooms, I truly recommend CVP's review of the Kata 35-80. Jake Radcliffe from CVP did a remarkable job measuring distortion, breathing, sharpness and many other technical aspects of the lens in his video. In general, both the 3580 and the 7135mm lenses are remarkably similar in size and weight. Considering their focal ranges, they are quite small for full-frame zooms and remarkably light with both weighing slightly over 1.5 kilograms only. Now this of course made them an ideal choice for a documentary production like mine. No need to rebalance tripods when changing the lenses and also light enough to use on the shoulder with your camera for extended periods of time. And it won't make the camera top heavy at all. I use the Kata zooms mostly with my Sony FX9, sometimes with the Sony FX6 or A7S III and due to the lens's low weight I mostly didn't even use lens support, which of course made it easier and quicker to swap them too. When using the lenses with a remote follow focus or any type of motor, it's nice to see that all the gears on both lenses are in the same position, which again makes swapping them easy. Both of these zooms are T2.9, which I would consider quite good or at least the norm for zooms in the focal ranges that these have. The fact that the T-stop is identical on both lenses makes it super easy to swap between them for shots in the same lighting setup within a scene. Now it also helps that they share the same front diameter of 80mm and both lenses have a 77mm thread mount. This came in handy when I used the 7135 on an A7S III camera as a B camera on a slider. No need to use matte boxes in this case, just a screw-on filter like with photo lenses. Now while we're talking about filters, there's another quite unique feature about the Kata zooms. They offer a rear plug-in filter tray, which lets you add those small so-called coin filters to the back of the lens, whether it's an ND, a UV, a streak or a mist filter. Unfortunately, I didn't have access to any of those filters when reviewing the lens, but it's great to have this here. Now let's talk about mounts for a second. DZO Film created a really cool mechanism that allows the user to change the mounts by themselves, so you don't have to go to a service center to do that. No, you don't even have to use any kinds of tools. It's also worth noting in this context that the normal version of the Kata zooms is built for mirrorless cameras, which means you have E, R, F, L, X and Z mounts available. Now, changing the mount itself is very easy. You just have to turn the barrel, press a button and then you can remove the current mount by lifting it up. To replace it with another mount, you can just reverse the operation. The kit also includes shims that you can and should add depending on the flange distance of your camera to get the focus right. Now, here I also have to mention that DCO Film also recently released additional versions of their Kata zooms and call them Kata Ace. 
those additional versions come with interchangeable EF and PL mounts. Now you will have to decide whether you want to go with the mirrorless mount version of this lens or the EFPL mount version of the lens because you cannot move mounts between the two versions of it. Now keep in mind that the EFPL version might give you most flexibility because of course you can use adapters to put EF and PL lenses on all kinds of mirrorless cameras but not vice versa. The Kata Ace versions are a little bit more expensive than the normal Katas for that reason and they come in black instead instead of white. Let me do a quick commercial break. Well, in case you didn't hear, MZ.com is now also part of the CineD family. MZ is the best place to learn everything you can about filmmaking, from script to shooting to post-production. Hundreds of hours of courses are in that platform. Because it's not about the gear, it's about how to tell a story. And that's what you learn with MZ. Now here are my thoughts on the focal ranges from a practical standpoint. 35 to 80 and 70 to 135 millimeters. Now, first of all, it's apparent that a wide angle zoom is missing from this lineup. I found it a bit challenging at times to shoot a feature documentary lacking such a wide angle zoom or prime that would fit the Kata look. So I really hope they will add something in the range of 24 to 35 soon. However, you can use their wide angle Vespit primes, for example, the 25 millimeter, to complement the zooms in the meantime. The look is not the same, but similar. But let's go back to the Kata zooms at hand. I like the fact that their focal ranges are slightly overlapping. Very often I would prepare for a shot with the shorter zoom, then realize that I need a slightly longer focal range, swap to the other one, and still am, am flexible enough to revert back to a slightly wider shot with the lens I'm already using, the longer one. Now, it's important to note that the 3580 becomes a tad less sharp from around 60 millimeters. So you will get better results swapping to the 7135 as soon as you can if you need a longer focal length shot. However, DCO Film also did a great job making images from both lenses look alike with similar characteristics. As I mentioned initially, those characteristics look very nice and truly cinematic to my eye. They make images from cameras like the FX9 appear a lot less perfect and less neutral, adding a certain level of warmth to the overall feeling. Bokeh is very soft and pleasing, which is certainly a result of the 16-bladed iris that they are using. Yes, there might be a loss in sharpness rendition when zooming beyond a certain point, but it seems all within acceptable limits. And as a user, you have to be aware that making full frame zooms with this small size and at such an affordable price will come at some cost. There is also visible chromatic aberration on the edges throughout the focal ranges of both lenses, even when you step down. I do, however, not see that as a downside of the lenses at all, as this CR clearly adds to the creamy, pleasing look of the lenses and it gives them a vintage touch. And that specific touch was the perfect choice for the documentary I was shooting. Overall, I'm really impressed with the Kata zooms and I think you get a lot of bang for the buck with this combo of lenses. I simply fell in love with the look, it made my shooting look more organic for sure and it took the digital edge of the images from the Sony FX9 and the A7S III for example. The fact that you can change the mount by yourself without any tools to other mirrorless mounts or between EF and PL makes them a long-term investment that should still serve you well in the years to come if you decide to invest in this pair of lenses, even if you swap to a different camera system. They're small, their focal ranges make them quite versatile and in this price range it will be very hard to find something comparable for full frame cameras. Which is also why the Katas have proven to be very popular, at least that's what I'm hearing when talking to all kinds of retailers that are actually selling them. Now let me be clear, the DCO film Kata lenses are not perfect. If you want no chromatic aberration, total maximum sharpness all the way through the focal ranges, you will probably have to invest quite a bit more money to get a set of size compact zooms or something even more high-end. But if you're after a versatile combo of cinema zooms with a distinct, warm and organic look that fits so well in this day and age, the Kata zooms will serve you very well. I wouldn't want to miss their look anymore. Thanks for watching this CineD review. Stay tuned to CineD.com for a lot more content about filmmaking tech and the industry. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you soon.